G'day folks, and welcome back to the channel for a frequently requested update to my level 100 farming guide. This guide is going to be for people who have just got to level 100 on their first characters, for anyone who's playing solo self-found, but also for those people who, like me, don't really enjoy the Crucible or the Shattered Realm. Now, I do have to state here at the outset that the best place in terms of legendary items dropped per hour of time played is going to be the Shattered Realm. Totems can compete early on, and until you get to Shattered Realm around about 45 to 50, somewhere around there, it's about the break-even point. Until you get to that point in Shattered Realm, totems are going to be much better. After that point though, the Shattered Realm is the best place to farm uh, legendary items. So if you have a character who can do Shattered Realm 75 and 76, then that is going to be your best bang for your buck. You can go deeper, and you will now get loot for going deeper since patch 1.2, uh, but it also becomes more difficult, and based on discussions I've had with people who do enjoy Shattered Realm, it seems like doing Shattered Realm 75 is still kind of the sweet spot for the most amount of loot you can get for the amount of time it takes to complete the difficulty level. So. This guide is going to be a way to gear your characters without going into the Shattered Realm, because fresh characters, generally speaking, are not going to be able to complete the Shattered Realm. And even if you somehow have a leveling character that is powerful enough to clear Shattered Realm 75, if you're on a fresh account, if this is your first character, you straight up can't go to 75 until you have done Shattered Realm 1, Shattered Realm 2, Shattered Realm 3, four, five, six, etc. And each one of those shards will be made up of three to four areas. Well, not three to four, it will be made up of three areas and then a boss room. And so to get to Shattered Realm 75 is going to take you hours. And those hours could have been spent doing totems, which would mean you would probably have a finished character in the time it takes you just to grind to get to Shattered Realm 75. So that's one point. The second point is that the Shattered Realm is only actually better for legendary items. If you're chasing epic or blue items, then the Shattered Realm is never better than just doing totems. So this is going to be a totem and treasure trove guide. The reasons you want to farm them is the large number of hero monsters that spawn from totems which drop a large number of blue and purple items, as well as blueprints. Uh, for the treasure troves, which I will be covering a little bit in this guide, this is mostly a totem farming guide. Um, the treasure troves also have a very high chance to drop blueprints. They also have a pretty good chance of dropping a random rare crafting material. So you can get a lot of rare crafting materials from doing these runs as well. This guide is going to cover my three favorite routes for totem farming. I'm also going to include some backup areas that are less efficient, but they're worth hitting for a change of scenery. Uh, I'm going to include the two celestial totems that I recommend farming and also why I recommend farming them. And I'm going to cover the Warden's Laboratory and why you might want to farm there. I'm also going to do a little bit at the start on how I manage my stash and some information on the loot filter. But before we get into that, I want to point out one of the most useful sites available for this game, and that is GrimTools.com. Now this is the world map section. Um, you can see here, this is the world map itself. And then if you click on any of the rifts or uh, any of the other icons here, it will take you to the local map. And the reason I point this out, if we come into the decrepit cellar here, is it shows you where all of the totem spawning points are. But also, if you click on one of the totems, you can bring up the group that it's in over here on the side. Now, this particular one, this is the decrepit cellar. So if you click on here, it'll take you to there and it kind of pulses. And then the other one that's in this same group, if we click here, it takes you to the overgrown cellar and shows you that one there. Now, this is important because this group will only ever have one of these active. And it's almost always going to have one of them. Uh, but I have had a few runs where neither of these spawned, so I'm not sure what the chance is for none of these to spawn. But generally speaking, you will get either 
this one or you will get this one. And so checking both of these locations will get you an ancient spirit totem. The reason this is important is for something like, uh, for example, down here at Devil's Crossing, this particular spirit totem, if we bring up the group for it, is in a group of three. And you can see this one from Devil's Crossing. So if you just run a little bit away from the rift, this will pop up on your map. And you can see if it's here or not. If it doesn't show up, then obviously you won't see it. But then you will know that either this one or this one is active. And so you know that when you come here, and maybe you don't see these because you're not quite close enough, you know one of them is there. And so you can run over to the side and then you will find it. Um, but the other good thing is, if you see this one, you're going to know that these two cannot be there. And so maybe you decide, like I did, that if this one's active, you just skip this run because it's, it's a very long run for one totem. And if this one's active, the, the quickest way to get to this totem is actually to run out of Devil's Crossing and up through, um, what's his name? Up through Shanks' little hideout here. So generally speaking, if I see this totem from Devil's Crossing, I don't do this uh, the second run that I'm going to show you. So that is kind of the important part about this. Now let's jump into the game, and uh, I'm going to be doing this on my Cabalist because it's a very powerful pet build that uh, kind of just plays itself, so I can focus more on waffling and less on worrying about if I happen to hit the right buttons. Now I'm going to summon all my pets, and then we're going to take a look at the loot filter. Um, now this is a skeleton build, so it takes a little while to get all my pets out. Um, so I'll be doing that in the background while everybody else is distracted by this shiny loot filter. So this is the game's loot filter, and generally speaking, this is how my loot filter looks um, on any of my characters that are kind of done. I turn the common or white quality items off. I don't ever want to see these um, after I pretty much cross this bridge, um, or at least very, very early in Act 1, I turn these off. And then the magic items I'll turn off usually some point in the second half of Act 1, um, but I almost never have this on after Act 1. Rares I will leave on usually until I'm farming totems and I'm level 100. Generally speaking, I turn this off once I'm level 100 because I don't need to see random rare items anymore. I'm looking for either blues or purples, or occasionally I'll be looking for a specific monster infrequent but I'm never going to use an actual rare item. So I turn those off uh, once I hit level 100 usually. I do, however, always show double rares. Um, this is off by default for some reason. I'm not sure why, but uh, I do turn this on because even if I'm not going to use any of the random uh, double rare rare items, double rare MIs are different, but even if I'm not going to use double rare rare items, um, they're still worth picking up because they sell for quite a lot of uh, iron bits. So this is basically what my filter looks like. If you don't want to see shields ever, just turn it off and you'll never see shields. If you don't want to see uh, two-handed guns or crossbows, turn that off. You'll never see them. That's fine. Um, with these ones that are off, uh, if you turn on just pet bonuses, you will only see items that have bonuses to pets. You will not see any of these items that don't have a pet bonus. So I generally don't mess with this stuff. Same with these ones. Um, if I only want to see items that have skill points for my masteries, you can check this. But it's basically going to filter out everything if you have one of these checked. Um, you'll see very few items. So I generally don't mess with these, as I was saying. In terms of stash management, uh, there's a number of mods, tools, programs, whatever you want to call them, that can effectively give you an infinite stash. Um, I don't personally do that because I like, I like having to make choices about which item to keep. Um, so I'm going to show you my stash now, and this is the personal stash uh, for this character, which you'll note has basically not much in it. This is just stuff that I've used while leveling. This is the items that this character had uh, when it hit level 100. And uh, I took all of these off and put these ones on as I found them. So this was the gear I had while leveling. And I had I had a pair of double rare gloves, which actually are not very good. But anyway, um, this is all the stuff I had from leveling. 
And this is my shared stash. So I do play hardcore, which means I use the shared stash for most things. So that way, if this character dies, I don't lose all of this stuff. Um, first tab is for components, rare crafting components, potions, uh, my stash of premium iron bars, um, the Ravager's helmet and Mog Dragon's shoulders, all these sorts of things. Um, and then you start looking into the rest of it. I've got a lot of one by one items. Now, uh, because I do have rainbow filter on, I can filter set items with uh, an S in brackets. Now, this one's not a set item. Um, this one is only showing up because if you look at the bottom there under Obsidian Tremor, it says it has three projectiles and the S is in brackets. The, uh, the Ludrigan's mark here is a set item and it has S in brackets at the start of the item name. So you'll notice all these set items, they're all one by ones. Um, I do have a few set items that are not one by one items. For example, I have the Lokar's set, I have the Morganeth set, there's a few items. Um, but generally speaking, I only really keep one by one set items because of transmuting. Now, let me just uh, sort my stash out a little bit here. And I'm going to sell all this stuff. Um, I guess I'll hang on to that. I may already have one of these. I'm not going to check in this video, but um, yeah. So the reason why I keep um, set items... Where are we? Where's a set item I don't care about? Ouroboros Eye. The reason why I keep it is because you can transmute them. So this Ouroboros Eye is also a, um, a a Mask of Lost Souls, and it's also an Avengers chess piece, and it's also a Gull's Gloves. Because you can come here and go to the Transmute tab, and you can transmute within the set, so I could turn this into a Ouroboros Robes by paying a Eldritch Essence and some other stuff and a pile of bits. Or I could use this one, which will transmute it into another set. So I can pay a Celestial Lotus, which I'm not going to do because these are actually really annoying to farm. Um, but I could turn this into any other set, any other item. And so that's why I hang on to a lot of these. And it's also a way of getting around the need to, well, you never need to use an infinite stash, but it's a way of getting around the want to use an infinite stash. So, that's my stash, that's how I manage it. Um, that's a pile of scrap I don't need. And now let's get into the actual runs. Now, we'll cover the first one, or the best one first. So the best one, in my opinion, is Gloomwald. And if you've been watching the channel for any amount of time, and you've seen me get up to this point in a playthrough, you know that I love me some Gloomwald. The good part about farming this, if you are here for... Uh, let's say you're trying to farm the set that you need for your build, okay? You're playing a pet Kabbalist and you really want the Lost Souls set. You do this run, you exit to main menu, you come back in, you do this run, you exit to main menu, you come back in. When you fill up on rare items, you can come here and sell them to this guy. He will buy all the stuff you don't need. You keep a handful of stash of, uh, of set items to roll whenever you get Celestial Lotuses. And otherwise, you just keep doing this particular run. Now, uh, do be aware that when you're running through this area, you have a decent chance of running into the, uh, the Kubacabra Beast Nemesis. He can spawn here, he can spawn here, he can spawn up here, he can spawn, I think, here, he can spawn here, he can spawn here, there's another spot up here somewhere. He's all through this area. I see him probably about one run out of every four. So if you can't kill him, you're going to have to go around him. So this is the first spot we want to check. And we've lucked out this time in that the treasure trove is here. So I'm just going to blow this up. And do note that every treasure trove costs you a dynamite. And will generally drop you two items. Um, sometimes three, and sometimes like this time you can just get one. I think what's happened here is it's tried to drop me a blueprint because these uh, treasure troves will try to drop you a blueprint pretty much every time. Um, but this character on this save file happens to have all of the blueprints. Um, it, it can't drop me a duplicate, so I just get nothing. Um, so check there for the treasure trove. 
then you check here for a totem, which you're going to see this either from the rift or from like anywhere in here, you'll be able to see it. And then we head down here to the stairs. Um, side note, if you are doing a pet cabalist, it could be worth coming up here because this area has uh, one of the spawn locations for the hero uh, wendigos. And they drop these things. Now this one is a pretty much perfect um, affixes. The rolls could be better, but the actual prefix and suffix is perfect for this build. Um, I farmed for about two and a half to three months on and off to get that, so um, it's, it's definitely worth hitting that area if you're looking for that sort of an item. Uh, but that's not part of the run. Uh, so we come in here after we check the totem. So rift, merchant, treasure trove, totem, stairs down. There can also be heroes inside this building. Um, and then we come in here and we're looking for a treasure, uh, a totem, which could be here. That's an ancient Aether Warp totem. Uh, it's not there this time, which means it's either not spawned, uh, that particular group, or it's in the other cellar, which we'll get to. Um, but this place always has a treasure trove in it. And so I've got a Wendigo spirit out of this one, as well as two blues that I don't really care about. Um, this totem here, depending on what build you're playing, you can actually start a fight between all these uh, all these Wendigos and cannibals and stuff. And this totem, if you just pop the totem and then immediately run away, they'll actually start fighting. Um, generally speaking, the totems will win and, and easily, but uh, it can be fun to start a fight with them. Um, other things to note in this area is just here is where Avarice lives. She has a 50% chance of being here. If she's not here, she'll be in the other place. Uh, she can be a little rippy, so just be aware of that. Um, vitality damage heals herself, surrounded by monsters that will also heal her, and she has tons of health. Um, if you didn't find the totem already over here, then it will be here. They're, these are the only two places it is, and it is always in one of those two places. So when you come in here, you are guaranteed a treasure trove, and there's a decent chance you'll get a totem. There's heaps of legendaries in there. And you can see Handeroth here. Uh, this is another one of the legendary Wendigos. This is actually a quest that I've kept active because I'm farming the... Uh, well, not the Wendigo Eye, I wanted the gazes, but the, the Wendigo Medals. Um, so I've still got that active. Again, though, that's not part of the run unless you want it to be. Um, up here, you have a rotting stump. This could also be a trap, so there might be like a tree golem drag itself out of the floor. You can tell it's a trap if it's outlined in red. Um, just here next to the wall is another potential location for the treasure trove. Uh, we've already got ours from here. So this one is obviously not here. It'll only be in one place and never more than one. Then we run up here. And there may be a treasure tro or a, uh, a totem rather right here. So you do this one if it's there. Then run over here and there's another rotting stump. This is another Ugnum Bloom. Um, do be aware, Kubacabra likes to spawn right here. Um, if you're not confident in killing Kubacabra, this, this run can be uh, a little rippy. Um, this area here can be quite dangerous. You can see two stars here. Um, this could have been three or four stars. It could also have been one of these uh, special Wendigos. This is also a spawn point for them. And you can get Pakla spawn here. So you could potentially have five, six, maybe seven heroes in this one area. And they all have auras and they kind of merge together to be this one murder pack. And it, it can be a little rippy. So just be aware of that. Um, this is the last location for the treasure trove in this area. If you haven't found it by this point, uh, go back. You missed it. Um, heading over here, you'll see the uh, the totem for this area has actually spawned up there. So I'm going to run up there, but I am also keeping my eye on the map because Kubacabra, like I said, does like to jump out from behind the bushes up this area. Um, and I don't fancy dying <laughs> while I'm recording. Um, this cellar is important. I'll come back to that in a second. That's where I generally end the uh, the run. Um, if I, if I get this far. So, uh, totem. 
So there we go, we've got the Girdle of Stolen Dreams. I'm gonna hang on to that. It's small, and it's not a set item, so I can't transmute and get that item. Um, what does it actually do? Vitality and Bone Harvest, plus one to Occultist. So this is this is a Vitality Cabalist belt. Right, so that is not quite the end. Let's go into the Decrepit Cellar. This can sometimes be a slightly fancier chest. A um, It's not a Hidden Spoils, but like a, a better chest. So check that one as well if you come up this way. Uh, into the cellar here. Now, I did not find Avarice in the previous cellar, so I know she's in here. It's also spawned me the Ancient Spirit Totem, so I've lucked out here. Uh, sometimes you just don't get this one either. Uh, I'm not sure what the chance is, but it does happen. Now, Avarice is going to be right here. And like I said, you want to keep your eye out on Avarice and clear the area around her if you're having trouble killing her. Because she does spawn with a lot of things that will heal her. Um, let's go ahead and do this Ancient Totem. Uh, like I said, the good thing about this pet build is it kind of just plays itself. As long as I can stay out of the goop on the ground, I'm usually pretty safe. And the damage is quite good. Um, Closed Fist of Vengeance, this is a set ring. I collect those, so I'm going to keep it. The Avatar of Order is also a very small legendary item, so I'm going to keep that one as well. Okay, so this is now the end of this particular run, so I'll poke my head out and uh, give you a quick recap. And this is by far the best run, in my opinion. So we start here, run around here, check for Kuba all through this area. Straight up here, check for the treasure trove. Over here, check for the totem. Down here into the cellar. We go through the cellar, there is a totem in there, there is a treasure trove in there. And then we come out here, we come up, we check for the treasure trove here. Come over here, check for the totem. Bounce over here, hit the Rotting Stump for an Ugden Bloom. Up here into the Death Pit for a bunch of heroes and the last potential location for the Treasure Trove. And then if you found the Treasure Trove and you've already found the Totem, don't even bother with this because the, the Totem can't be here if you've already killed it and there's no Treasure Trove up here. Generally speaking, I stop here. Um, I almost never come up this way, but uh, it's up to you if you want that extra Treasure Trove or, or sorry, if, it, if you want that extra totem, either in the cellar or up here if you haven't already found it. Um, one thing to note about this particular run is it is actually more efficient to start here and run backwards than it is to start down here and run forwards. Um, the reason I don't do it this way is because you have to spin the camera to get any decent movement range. So if you'll note, uh, I'm going to stand right on this little shadow. Hang on. Can't really see it. Let's go get the pets out of the way. This little shadow of the branch, if I'm running down on the screen, I get to here. If I'm running up on the screen, I'm way past here. So you generally want to be running up, especially if you're using movement skills to get around. So when you start at the Gloomwald Crossing Rift and run backwards, you have to turn your camera around. Otherwise, there's kind of no point. And, um,. I, I don't want to have to memorize the map upside down as well as right way up, so I just don't bother, and I run uh, forwards. So, this is my favorite farming route. This is, as far as I can tell, the best and most legendary items available in a totem run in the game. However, doing this over and over and over and over and over and resetting and doing nothing else gets a little bit boring, um, and it can get boring very quickly. So, the second run I do is starting in Devil's Crossing, and you can probably guess where this is going because I've already talked about this one. Okay, this Spirit Totem here, I can already see this, and I never run out here to get this. Alright, it's a very long run for a basic totem. All I'm doing is checking if it's here. So now I know that when I go over here to the Arcovian Foothills, I know that the two totems on the left uh, which would be either here and here. I know they can't spawn because that one is already there. These are in the same group. They cannot spawn. So I know that we have one here, one here, or one here. Those three locations is going to be where the other totem is out here. And uh, I would I would have actually skipped this normally because uh, this is a very long run for a Forsaken totem. However, we do also get some Aether Clusters out here, and these are always 
always good to kill. So I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to actually run over there and kill that. Um, do note that if you are doing, uh, if you have Nemesis with the Arcovian Undead, which I actually don't for some reason, um, Moosey can spawn right here as well. So you could potentially get a Nemesis and a Totem doing this. Um, so this is uh, another one of the runs that I do sometimes do. Like I said, if I go to Devil's Crossing and I find that this one is there, I just skip this whole run because this is a very long way to go for one totem. If you come out here and jump down here and you get a totem and then rift back and run over there and you get a totem, it's it's kind of worth it. It's still not as efficient as just doing gloom mold, but it's a change of scenery. Maybe you're looking for Moosey as well. So that can be good to do. The next one everyone's going to be expecting me to do is Twin Falls. Um, don't do Twin Falls. Twin Falls sucks. With one exception, which I will cover later. But Twin Falls is one totem. It's not worth coming here for one totem. I mean, do it if you want to. I'm not your dad. You know, you do what you like. Uh, but in terms of loot per time, this is not worth doing. So I don't ever do Twin Falls unless, like I said, there is an exception. Um, and I will come to that later. The third run that I'm going to recommend is Sorrow's Bastion, Bloodgrove, and Darkvale Village. Now, you come to Sorrow's Bastion because we're checking for this totem here. Now, you don't see it straight away. You usually have to get sort of over here to this break in the wall. And then you'll be able to see the totem here. Um, I'll just go a little bit closer just to make sure. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's not there. So this one is not here. Um, now I rift over to the Blood Grove. Now, because of how the groups work in this game, I know that... I'll come back to that. I've, I've got to do this one. So this is part of a different group. This is part of a group of four. This one can spawn here or here, or uh, I think it's here, but it's kind of in the middle. And there's another one over here. If this one is active, I do it. And I never go check the other three in this group. So this is kind of why I don't really love this one because it can be quite a run now i've just noticed the screen kind of chugged a little bit there which tells me it was checking for a nemesis spawn um your game may not do this but i've noticed it's something that mine does so i probably have ben jar around here somewhere uh he's not part of this so i'm gonna skip him but um that's just something to keep your eye out for um maybe your game does the same thing i'm not sure but uh, that's something I have noticed. Uh, Stonefist Rebuke. I already have a couple of these on different characters. But uh, I do have... I do want to check them. Just in case they are better. So I'm going to check this one later. And otherwise we're going back to the Blood Grove. Now the reason I checked the one down there at Sora's Bastion. Is because now I know that... Uh, that one is not there. So if I take a couple steps... And I notice that this one is also not there. It's in a group of three. And so now I know that the third one is down here in the secret area. Which means I know I'm only getting one totem out of this run. So at this point, I would scrap this whole thing and go do something else. However, since we're doing a video on it, I'll show you. And this is what I mean by uh, really inefficient runs. Because you gotta run all the way down here. It's, it's a decent run, even with movement skills. You gotta run all the way down here, loop around here under the, uh, under the waterfall, into the secret area, which apparently I've never been here on this character. Um, and then all you get is a Void Touch Totem. Not Forsaken, not Ancient, you run all this way for a basic totem. So I don't do this one. So if it's not there, and it's not here, I skip this one. Um, so let's just do it since we're here. There we go. Not a single legendary in sight. At this point, if you actually do this totem, just rift back to the blood grove. Don't run. It's way too far. So that's one group. And uh, I'm going to run over here. And check the second group. So the second group is also three totems. One of them is going to be down here. I can already tell it's not there. Another one's going to be up here, which I can also pretty much say is not going to be there. 
So I know that the third potential location for this totem is up here in Darkvale Village. Now, again, ordinarily, I would have scrapped this run way back at the start because this is a lot of running for not very good totems. Uh, but because it's a video that I'm recording, I'm going to show it. So the reason you come into Darkvale Village is for this Forsaken Totem and for the treasure trove that is guaranteed to be here. Uh, apparently I lost a skeleton at some point. Doesn't usually happen. So this dynamite is always here. And then you want to check in here for a treasure trove. It's not there, so we move on. Coming out here, I'm going to hit this, uh, this totem. Just clear the area a little bit before I do. Alright, that's enough. Um, I did notice this arcane guy, so I'm going to sick the entire army on him just to get rid of him. Now, this area is quite good for um, the occasional Blood of Cthon, and also Cthonic Seals of Binding. You can get a decent number of these in here. Um, this is where the treasure trove is spawned this time. So there is uh, one, two, three, four potential locations in the village. This is the second one. The first one is over here by the dynamite. The third one is in this building. So it could be in this little corner here. And then I would come over here to check this one. And it would be in this corner here. Now, since I'm in the area, I'm going to kill Zarya as well. She should go down pretty quickly. There we go. She has a lot of MIs um, and also can drop legendaries as well. So that is the third run that I recommend. Um, I'm also going to include a couple of singular uh, totems that I do sometimes do. The first one is in the Astakhan Valley here. Now, from this rift gate, if you open up the map, you can see this particular time I've got this one. But it could also be over here. And it could also be down here. This one's fairly close, and so I do like doing this one. Um, you do get heroes on the way as well. And so, let's go ahead and turn this on. There we go. All right. The next one is up here in the uh, Necropolis interior, so we'll go and check that one out as well. Now, this one is fun uh, because it's actually very easy to tell where this one's going to be, if I can finish loading. Um, when you get here, just take a step and you'll see this one pop into existence here or not. And this is the only thing you're checking for. So I know it's over here. Um, I will go do this, but I'm going to skip this for a moment and show you what I would do if I didn't see this, I would run over here to the right and then onto this little section here. Now, the next place I'm checking is just here. Um, generally speaking, you're going to see this fairly close to the actual portal. Um, but if it's not there, you keep running up this little, uh, I guess we call it a bridge since it kind of goes over this. The next place you're checking is just here. From here, you will be able to see where it is and it'll be either here so this little point here, maybe over here, and maybe over here, and that's it. Um, I happen to know it's over there, so I'm going to go get that. And uh, then we'll move on to the last one that I kind of recommend a little bit. Um, these ones are just kind of fun to do. Uh, as you can see, this was quite a long run for a... Is this one Forsaken? Yeah. Quite a long run for just one totem. So these are things that I do... Um, you know, when I'm bored of doing Blue Mold, basically. Um, or if I'm playing a pet build and I don't want to spend the time to resummon all my pets, um, I'll sometimes add these in just to make the, the run a little bit longer in between having to summon all this stuff again. Um, so that is going to be uh, all of the totems. Uh, sorry, no, that's not all the totems. I have one more I wanted to show. So over here in the Steel Cap District, um, and again, this is one that I generally don't do very often. But uh, if you run out here, you can get into the Candle District. And you'll see this one here. Aether Warp Totem. Um, 
this area has three different totems. They're all in their own groups, but they seem to act like they're in one group. So I have never seen this one and also the one out here and also this one up here. I've never seen any two of those together, but they are all in their, in their own individual one totem groups. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on there, but uh, generally speaking, if you check this one and it's here, you can usually not bother checking the others. Uh, what do we got here? One-handed mace? Nope. Pegar's betrayal? Nope. And yep, I don't want any of that. So just out here, you can get another totem just around the corner here. Um, I think it's here or, uh, or potentially in here, but you'll see it on the map anyway. I don't do this one very often, so I'm not 100% on exactly where it spawns. Um, because, like I said, I don't usually do it. But there's three totems out here. One of them is right here. Um, and generally speaking, you're only going to see one of these. So that is the end of the totems that I recommend doing. There are obviously other ones. Um, but the only thing left to sort of cover now is the Warden's Laboratory. And why you might want to do this. So, firstly, when you are doing this, there are going to be treasure troves that you pop. And there are going to be more treasure troves than there are dynamites that you're going to pick up. So you will eventually run out of dynamite. And the best way to farm dynamite is actually to farm aether clusters. So, each one of these, for every three of these, you can get one of the shards, which is the two slaughters. Um, hopefully I'll get one to drop, and I can point it out, but I mean, pretty much everyone who's watching this should know what an Aether Shard is. So you can run through here, and there are 14 of these Aether Clusters. There is also sometimes a totem right here. If the totem is not here, then, uh, there's Valdoran, uh, then it will be over here. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not showing up here. Maybe, uh, maybe there's another one over here in the same group. But uh, generally speaking, I only do these two. Um, and I'm typically only going to come here for um, for Aether Crystals. Which is one of those things that you can never have enough of, because as soon as you start crafting pretty much anything, you're going to burn through hundreds of crystals very, very quickly. So you come through here, you farm all these, and then uh, specifically Black Legion Blacksmiths. So we're talking Homestead, basically. If you go to Homestead, then uh, I am actually gonna, I'm gonna go kill Valdoran just because he's there and I'm greedy. Um, but this is another reason why you might farm the Warden's Laboratory. You could also go kill Krieg. There's another location for Valdoran that can spawn here. Uh, there's another one here as well. Um, so you could get Valdoran fairly commonly in here. Uh, nowhere near as common as Kubacabra in the Gloomworld, but uh, Valdoran does show up here. Uh, he also can spawn here and up here somewhere as well. Um, but let's go let's go pay him a beating. Um, Valdoran is a little bit scary, but uh, he should die pretty easily in his campaign form. So Valdoran's MI. Also the Nemesis troves here. Every time you kill a Nemesis, you will generally get two purple items out of it, or you will get a uh, a purple item and a blueprint or something like that. You get two good items usually from a nemesis trove. So when you kill, when you see them, it is worth killing them. All right. So uh, I did not end up getting any aether shards. So let's pretend that I didn't have any in the stash, and let's go to homestead. So this is the main reason why you farm the warden's laboratory is to turn those Aether Crystals into Aether Shards, which you can do, I think, at any smith, but you, you definitely want to use this one anyway. Um, so if we do Aether Shard here, it costs you three Aether Crystals to make one Aether Shard, and then you can turn that Aether Shard into Dynamite. Now this one, like I said, is only available for uh, Black Legion blacksmiths. Generally speaking, I just use this one. Um, I'm actually struggling to think of another one, but I have it in my head that there is one. Regardless, Valdric is the one you want. And that is the reason why you might farm the Warden. 
Now there are a lot of other farms you can do. For example, like I said, you can go kill Warden Creek. He will drop you some decent loot. You can come in here and kill Cronley. If we actually go to Cronley's hideout, you get, uh, one, you get to farm Cronley's nemesis reputation to get access to Fabius. Uh, but also this totem in here. So potentially here could also be just here or it could be down here. So there's a totem in here. Then you kill Cronley. He drops some loot as well. This is another good farm. Um, in Act 3, you could do Darkvale Gate. So if we come in here, Darkvale Gate does have... Well, it's got two levels, so I'm not going to be able to show you properly, but um, you can get a totem in here. There's another totem on the next floor. I think they share spawn locations, so you're only going to get one of them. There's a guaranteed dynamite up here. And then you have Thalnosh at the end, who drops some pretty good pet rings, which I don't think I have one on me. No. Uh, but you can drop... Um, Blood Swan Signets from him, and they come with pet bonuses built in, and then if you happen to get, um, for example, uh, what do we get? <laughs> Hound Masters is not available on rings. Neither is Catalyst, but um, if you happen to get a double rare one with, with two pet affixes on it, could be really, really good. If, if one of those affixes is of the untamed, um, well, we are using a, uh, a familiar, so the skill points on that would be useful. And also it gives physical resistance to all your pets, which means they will be tougher. So that can be a good one to farm as well. Um, I would not farm the Logorian. It just takes too long to get there. Although this can be good for farming uh, Blood of Cthon. Um, but it, it's generally just too long to bother. Um, and same deal over here with doing uh, Theoden. It's, it's a very long run. There are totems on the way, sure. But uh, it's a very, very long run. You're going to spend most of your time just running. So I don't recommend that. And same for Korvac, although Korvac is much closer to a rift. Um, the only other boss that I will mention, if you go to the Corvan City, and then head here to the Pit of Atonement, so you're going to run all the way around here. Uh, inside there is a boss, and his name is The Messenger, uh, or something to that effect. And he drops Celestial Lotuses, which, uh, if you recall, are used for transmuting items into uh, different sets. So, Celestial Lotus, different sets. So one place you can farm these is from the Messenger, and the other place is from the Celestial Totems. Now this is the exception for why you might want to farm Twin Falls because one of the Celestial Totems spawns here in, well, not in Twin Falls, but close to Twin Falls. It'll spawn either here, or up here, or in a third location over in the Broken Hills, which, hang on, let's just go there and I'll show you. I'll run this little area first. So in the Broken Hills, if you head to the north here, there is a Crumbling Wall, hiding another Crumbling Wall, and you can come into this little area here, and there is a dungeon you can do right here. Now this dungeon is a dangerous area, or a dangerous domain, and so it is worth checking what, what uh, modifiers the monsters have rolled with. Reduce target's damage for one second, not really an issue for me since I don't do damage, I, I have minions to do that for me. Um, and one thing I will point out as well, whenever I'm doing these runs, is I will always stop for these guys, not not this particular type, but anything with a star or a skull over its head, I will kill. Into the second area of this, um, or the second floor of this area, uh, same, same modifiers, and we're heading up here, which is where the Celestial Totem may spawn. I suspect that I would be able to see it by now if it was going to be there, and so I don't think it's actually going to be here this time. That doesn't look like it. Um, but if we just run up here, if it was here, it would be kind of in this area. So back to Twin Falls. Like I said, this is the kind of the only reason why I would farm Twin Falls. Um, you can see there is a totem here and it could be here or down here. Um, and there is a couple of spawn locations for Musiloki. Uh, that's the undead nemesis. But um, 
generally speaking, I don't bother with those totems because it's it's a decent run, and uh, if I need totems, there are better places to find them. Over here, however, in this little hidden area, no royal jellies for me, unfortunately. Um, there is a boss in the middle here who can drop decent loot, and it looks like I didn't get the celestial totem here, which means. Unless it just hasn't spawned this game, it's going to be to the north here. Now this bridge is broken by default. You actually have to come around the long way, so this is Pine Barrens. You run through here, this is the... Uh, what is it actually called? The Tyrant's Hold. So that's the Tyrant's Hold. And then you come through here into the Arcovian Docks, run all the way down here, and you can repair this bridge. And as you can see here, this is the Celestial Totem. Now, Celestial Totems are the big boy totems, okay? If your build is a little bit sketchy on any other totem, don't do these, they'll kill you. Um, these are going to spawn between 1 and I think 7 is the most I've seen. Um, but you can potentially have a lot of Scions. And these are the Scions of Hunger and Famine and such that you see in the uh, Morganeth's Folly Skeleton Key Dungeon. Um, they are some of the most dangerous non-act boss, non-nemesis monsters in the game. And if you have seven of them all at the same time, they can be quite dangerous. Now, this build, this character, is done. It's got very good gear. Um, it pretty much can't be improved at this point. And you'll notice I'm clearing the area. Like I said, these are dangerous. If your build is not up to snuff, these will kill you. So, let's go ahead and turn this on. And I'm going to target one of these Scions at a time. And put my entire army onto them. One at a time. And anytime I take damage, I'm going to run away. And I'm kind of surprised I haven't lost any skeletons yet. I would expect to lose maybe one or two. Um, maybe not. Alright. The upside is that they drop a decent amount of gear. Um, Night Shard's actually a pretty good shield, but... Anyway, they drop a decent amount of stuff. But the thing we're here for is the Celestial Lotus. Now, you're not going to get one of these from every single one of these totems, but you will usually get one. So... Celestial Totem number one is either here, on this little platform here, or in this little dungeon here. There is a second one that I recommend farming, and that is over here in Eastmarsh. So if we head to Burridge Village, and then head down the road here and across this bridge, you'll be able to see it before you get anywhere near it usually. Uh, sometimes I've noticed one of them you have to get quite close to, but other times you can see it from a mile away. It's just down to whether it decides it wants to spawn or not, basically. So usually once I get over this bridge, I'll kind of stop here in this little bend. And I'm checking up here. It's not there. I'm checking here. It hasn't shown up. And I'm checking here. Those are the three spots it can spawn. Usually, if it's down here, I'll see it. I am, however, going to run down because there's a two, two out of three chance that it's down here. And there's only a one out of three chance that it's up the top. Now, I'm fairly close, and it's only just now spawned. Other games I'll play, I'll be standing here, and I'll see this. So sometimes you have to run a bit closer, but two spots here, one spot here, it will be in one of those three spots. I have never found this one to not spawn. Same with the other Celestial Totem. And the reason you do these is because, you know, you have four out of five pieces of your set and you're just trying to flip any set piece you can get your hands on and trying to get the last piece. Or um, you're stockpiling them so you don't have to worry about using item assistant or something like that. Like I said, these also drop a decent amount of loot. Um, and there is another set of these elsewhere in the game, but these are the two that I generally do. These are going to be the ones that I recommend. Um, and I do also recommend not killing yourself by standing in all this rubbish. Didn't lose any skeletons, which is, uh, it's good. It's very good. 
All right, so none of this loot is stuff that I'm going to hang on to. So, uh, right here, up here, and up here is the last of that. So, that is my farming guide, and I recommend doing most of this stuff if you're a fresh level 100. The best one I've found is the Gloomwald run. When you get sick of that, add in the Arcovian Foothills Rift one and the Sorrow's Bastion through to Devil's or through to Darkvale Gate run. When you get bored of those as well, you can add in Astakhan Valley, you can add in Necropolis Interior. There are other really good ones, like if we just poke our head out here. Um, the Rotting Croplands, there's an ancient totem, it can be here, it can be over here, it can be over here, or it can be up here. Um, you will be able to see by now, I know that one's not there, so I would know that I have to run over here. Or actually, at this point I would just bail, I'm, I don't generally run over here, it's not worth the time. And I am definitely not running up there for it. So, there it is. Ancient Aether Warp Totem. This one's good because it's ancient, and not particularly because it's close. Um, so you can add in things like this, and like I said, there's a lot of other totems in the game that I haven't mentioned. Um, there's a whole bunch of them in the White My Office, for instance. Um, most of which you'll be able to see if I've explored the area. Yeah, so that one. Also, there's like three of them that can spawn along here. There's a lot of other ones, but these are the best ones that I've found. Gloomwald, Arcovian uh, Foothills, Bloodgrove. That's kind of it. And then once you're kind of a little bit stronger and you want to look into flipping set pieces, or maybe you just had a really strong leveling build, um, you can go to Twin Falls and do that Celestial Totem. You can come here to Barrett's Village into Eastmarsh and do that one and then flip totems, or flip set items like that. So, that is my guide on how to get geared when you are a fresh level 100, if you're playing solo self-found, if it happens to be your first character. Whatever the reason for it, that's how I would recommend doing it. I do need to mention as well that Shattered Realm, if you have it already unlocked up to 75, if you have a character that can clear it, it is going to be the best place to get gear. Uh, there are also blueprints that cannot drop from treasure troves or totems. There is the, the ultra rare or the rare group of blueprints that can only drop from Deep Shattered Realm or from um, uh, Nemesis Troves. They may also be able to drop from some act bosses perhaps, uh, but I do know they can't drop from the uh, regular treasure troves. The other source of gear if you are interested, is the Skeleton Key Dungeons. You can get a lot of loot from the treasure room at the end of them. I think you can drop the rare blueprints from there as well. Um, and of course, they have their own dedicated loot drops from either the dungeons themselves or from the boss. But uh, yeah, that'll be the end of this particular video. So thank you all very much for watching. If you've watched to the end, I'll uh, see you in the next video. And goodbye for now.